let's continue through a process of long division, dividing polynomials by polynomials, like we did in an arithmetic problem. So I'm going to take this polynomial in four terms and divide it by this binomial. So first, I'm going to ask of you, what term times x would give you 3x cubed? So I need a 3x squared times x will give me a 3x cubed. That's the hardest part for people to figure out what to put right there. That times this has got to match that exactly. But once you figure it out, that it's got to be multiplied by the other portions of the divisor here. So 3 times a minus 2 is a minus 6x squared. And then i got to subtract. Remember with arithmetic and long division, you subtract. And when you subtract in algebra, you add the opposite. So this becomes a negative, and this becomes a positive, and the red is overpowering. These will always be zero because you made them match to begin with. And then here, a minus 5x squared and a positive 6x squared. I'm going to exaggerate. That's a 1x squared. The 1's not necessary. I'm going to bring down the minus 3x. If I ever wanted to bring it all down so I can see it, I'm welcome to do that. It's not quite like an arithmetic problem where you can only bring one term down at a time because we are going to have some missing terms in terms of descending order of the polynomial in the next few problems. But let's, until we get there, let's now go ahead and say to ourselves, what times x gives you x squared? What times x gives you x to the second power? Oh, it's x. Got to have a plus sign there. It's a positive x times x gives you 1x squared. And then this positive x times a minus 2 is a minus 2x. And now because you're going to subtract, you change the sign and change the sign. The x squareds add to be 0. A minus 3 and a positive 2 add to be a minus 1x. And then I'm going to bring down my minus 2. And then finally, i got to ask myself one more time, because I, um, I had a polynomial in four terms up above. So one more time, x times what number would give you a minus 1x? Sign and all, you've got to include the sign. So a minus 1 times x would give you a minus 1x. Again, the 1s aren't necessary to write. The minus 1 times a minus 2 is a positive 2. And then you got to subtract. Sometimes people at the very end are excited and they're done. They think they, they're all set and they don't want to, they forget to subtract. you got to change this sign and change this sign because this one doesn't have a remainder of 0. This one has a remainder of a negative 4. A negative 2 and a negative 2 is a negative 4. So finally, my answer is 3x squared plus x minus 1. And then I have a divisor of a negative 4, uh, I'm sorry, a remainder of a negative 4 over that divisor of x minus 2. There's my final answer. This right here could be the minus sign because plus a negative 4 is the same thing as minus 4. So it doesn't have to be written like this. It could be written like that. It could just be written as minus 4 over x minus 2. But remember, that's the same as plus a negative. So either way it can be written. Uh, let's do one where you're missing a term here in the polynomial. So I'm going to have a problem that's got an x cubed term, but it's going to be missing an x squared term in the next problem that we're going to do. So let's see. I'm going to use some a's. So I've got a cubed and then a plus 10. And I want to divide that by a minus 4. Would you notice that I kind of left a little hole here? I'm going to explain that in a minute. I did not put the a to the first next to the a to the third. I left room for an a squared. I sometimes call it a ghost space. Or sometimes I even put zero a squared right there to hold room in case an a squared term shows up. So let's just start the process. What times a gives you a cubed? a squared times a gives you a cubed. And a squared times a minus 4 is a minus 4a squared. If I had had this a written right there, I might be attempting to add a negative a and a negative 4a squared together, or when I change my signs, 
You're not allowed to do that. This is not a like term with that one. They don't have the same exponent. So I leave a space, or I put a little ghost in there, a zero, a squared, so that when I'm ready to subtract this or add the opposite, then I know that I'm going to add nothing to the 4a squared and get 4a squared. And then I'll bring down my minus a, and I start the process again. So I need now to put a term up here that when I multiply by a, I get 4a squared. And that has to be a positive 4a, because 4a times a is 4a squared. And 4a times a minus 4 is a minus 16a. And I change my signs because I'm subtracting, so I add the opposite. The a squared terms, of course, are going to disappear. This minus 1a and 16a adds to be 15a. And then I look up and I bring my 10 down. And I go again, please notice, descending order, a squared plus 4a plus now a constant. What number times a gives you 15a? And once you take that 15 times a and write it down, you've got to remember to take 15 times a minus 4 and get a minus 60. And then change your signs and change your signs. So the remainder for this problem is a 70. And my answer to this problem is a squared plus 4a plus 15. Plus a remainder of 70 over the divisor of a minus 4. One more problem to share with you. And the reason I picked the next one is I believe that most of my binomials here have had a 1 in front of the x term or the a term. I'm going to change that for the next one. If you've heard about synthetic division, this problem could have been done by a synthetic division. And I'm going to produce um, a video clip that talks about that process as well. So there are, um, there is another method for us to do this. Let's take a look at uh, x cubed minus 11x squared plus 11x minus 2. And let's divide by 2x minus 3. So again, the process is the same. I didn't need any ghost terms. I have an x cubed, <coughs> excuse me, x squared, x to the first, and a constant. So I didn't need any holes. I wonder what number times 2 will give me 6. 3. x times x to the second will give me x to the cube, third power. And then I just like to say this out loud again. Does 3x squared times 2x give me the 6x cubed? It does. And 3x squared times a minus 3 gives me a minus 9x squared. And now I'm going to change my signs because I'm subtracting or adding the opposite. Gone. Minus 11x squared plus 9x squared is a minus 2x squared. And then let's start the process again. I've got a 2x here. I want to put something up here that when I multiply it by 2x, I get a minus 2x. If you need to write the minus 1 down there, that's fine. Minus 1x times 2x is a minus 2x squared, but that 1 is not necessary. And this minus 1x times a minus 3 is a positive 3x. And then I have to change my sign, so I'm going to change my sign and change my sign. Gone. 11x minus 3x is 8x, and then I'm going to bring down my minus 2. And finally, I need to put a 4 right here, because 4 times 2x is 8x, and 4 times a minus 3 is a minus 12. And now I'm going to change my signs and change my signs. And my remainder here for this problem is a 10. My answer is 3x squared minus 1x. I'm just going to put minus x plus 4. And then the divisor is, I'm sorry, the remainder is 10 over the divisor. 